Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time, and today we're going to go check out the Carson City Mint built in the 1860s. Come join me today as we learn a little bit more about making coins and the importance it has here in Nevada and beyond. So let's go check out the Carson City Mint as well as the Nevada State Museum. So right now we are here on the far western portion in Carson City, which is the capital of Nevada. You can see Lake Tahoe, which is very well known. Here's Reno up here. And most people know Nevada for Las Vegas. But most people forget that this is Reno Carson and you have to go all the way down here to the extreme southern part of Nevada to get to Las Vegas. It's about an eight hour drive between the two, but most people think that they're close together. So today, what was the old Carson City Mint is now the Nevada State Museum here in Carson City, Nevada. I remember coming here as a kid and thinking this was one of the neatest museums I've ever been to. So I'm hoping to share some of that with you as we start talking about the coins here and how coins are made in specific to how coins are made here in Carson City. Carson City Mint was actually started in 1863. The government decided even before the statehood for Nevada that they needed a mint here or something to do with the silver that was coming out of the Comstock load in Virginia City or the Virginia City area, which is about 15 miles from here. The first coins would come out of here in 1870 with the very first striking of a coin on February 11th 1870. The mint stayed active from 1870 until 1885 when Grover Cleveland became president and was very anti-silver so they ended up closing down the mint temporarily but once Harrison became president he reopened it up in 1889 and then it continued until 1893 when the silver rush and Comstock load was coming to the end and they didn't have enough material to keep supplying the coins or the need for a mint close by. So as I enter the museum, most of the museum is actually housed within the old mint. And here's a map showing where we're at. So the highlighted areas where I just came in and paid and I'm heading down here to the southern area where you'll see there's there's a our Nevada stories section. There's actually a ghost town and we'll actually go into the mint. So here's a little information about the Nevada State Museum. The museum hours are 830 to 430 Wednesday through Sunday. They are closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. So keep that in mind. An admission is $10 for adults and anyone under 17 is free and they do have annual memberships available as well. For more information, I will list the website down below. All right, so heading towards the Mint. On our way there, we're actually gonna go through a ghost town. If you wanna see more about the ghost town and the other parts of the museum, stay tuned for my video on the Nevada State Museum following this video on making coins here at Carson City Mint. So the museum here, the Mint walks through 14 steps in the processing of coins and so I'm going to try as best I can to walk you through those as I learn about them as well so we can learn about them together. So the first step was actually to bring in the precious metals and what they would do is they'd weigh those on here what were known as bullion scales and that was the very first step of coin processing. Individuals would bring in the silver and gold they'd find out how much they had and then it would go from here into the melting room. Now this scale says it has 10,000 ounce limit. Once weighed, all the material will be melted down and then made into bullions. And assayers would take a piece of that and figure out their purity. From there, it was then soaked in sulfuric acid where things like gold would separate out and silver would separate out from the mixture to make it pure. Once separated, the gold and silver would go into the ingot melting room where they'd pour pure or almost pure silver and gold. They'd add a little copper for strength to it into these ingot make it making features. And then they'd actually press this out into bars and then they'd use those bars. Because they don't have examples of all these in some of the other rooms, I showed a picture where they were doing the ingot melting using these molds, but then they'd press the ingots through 
and they do this twice and so that way they can do them once to, to get them all, all elongated and then t another time to reduce the thickness. From there, they'd actually go into the annealing room located in the basement where they're fit into, the strips were fit into copper tubes and sealed with clay. They would then go into an oven, an annealing oven for about 40 minutes. From there, they could actually take those and then start cutting the coin. So the cutting room is where they had two cutting machines and then they would start cutting the size of the coins they wanted in what they call blanks. So these would be these would be the the silver gold and the right size for the coin, but they wouldn't have any of the stamp on them yet. From making the blanks from the thinned and annealed iron and gold strips, they then would have to weigh them to make sure they were the exact weight. And so you had these balance scales and they had teams of people doing this. And where this was done was known as the adjusting room. Here's a picture of what the adjusting room would have looked like with a series of people weighing the blanks. From there, they were taken into what was known as the whitening room where they, they further cleaned the blanks before they were going to go over into the milling and coining. The blanks then were loaded into a milling machine. The Carson City Mint had three machines for different sizes, denominations, and that's what they're trying to show down here are the three different sizes. And what they do is they create the lip on the edge and kind of that edge that we, that roughness we always know around the side of the coin. And once that was done, it was known as a planchet. And once they had the planchet, they had to make sure they had the coin dies put in. And here's some canceled coin dies. Here's one from 1885. Uh, in 1873. These are both of them. This is really neat. They, you can actually zoom in on the old coin dies here from the Carson City Mint. But once they had the planchets and they had the correct coin die in place, an operator would come here and start pressing the coins. Now, this is actually the coin press number one. So this is the original coin press here in Carson City. So this was the very first coin press here and it's still here and sometimes it's running. Unfortunately, it's not running today, but it'd be really neat to get a coin pressed off of this. A coin press operator here could produce 100 silver dollars a minute. So that's faster than one a second. That's pretty amazing. So once the coins are pressed, they'd be sent to counting boards where a coin or an assistant would rapidly and accurately count the coins. And if we take a look on this map, we can see we went from whitening to the milling part where they're actually making the coins and then it would come back here to the coiner's office to count them and check them again. The final step was actually to take the coins to the treasurer's office where they're bagged and stored in a vault. And we can see where that vault is here. There's a treasurer's office and here's the vault where they put those new coins before being deposited out. And you can see where there's the pain teller, which I imagine is where they would tra eventually transfer these over and the pain teller could pay those out to the different businesses as they came in. So fascinating process on how to make a coin. To recap, as they come in, they weigh it. From weighing it, they have to melt it down and find out what they have. And so they go to the melters and refiners and then come over here to the ingot casting. From here, they actually have to go take it up to the assayer's office. And then from the assayer's office, they go back to the refinery and they're actually going to melt it down even more. From there, they come down to the annealing and cutting room in the basement. And from the basement, then they come up to the adjusting room. And from the adjusting room, they go to they come down and they go into, I think it's the rolling room, which is where they're putting the edges on the blanks. And then they go to the whitening room and eventually they end up here in the milling and coining. From here, they come up to the coiner's office where they check them. And then they eventually end up all the way down here at the treasurer's office in the vault, ready to be deposited over here at the paying teller. Pretty neat to look at this and put all these steps into some kind of process. For how coins are made. I learned something new today and I hope you all did as well. Here are some of the coins. These are trade dollars and these are the Liberty Head dollars and probably the most famous from here are actually called the Morgan 
head dollars. The very first coin that came out of here was one of these seated liberties or liberty seated dollars in 1870. I like they're showing all the different coins that came out of here. Here's some of the gold coins that came out, the 20, the 10, and the $5. Here's the Liberty Seated again from 1870s. If we come down, I want to come over. Here's the Liberty, the Liberty. And let's see if we can find the Morgan, the famous Morgan coin. And here, this Liberty head is the one I believe they call the Morgan coin, which is the most famous coin to come out of here. So behind bars are examples of each type of coin that came out of here. So anybody who's a coin enthusiast, this is really a neat place to come visit and learn a little bit more about mints, especially in the 1800s, and where our currency comes from and how our currency was made in the late 19th century. Thank you all for joining me today from Carson City, Nevada, learning about the Carson City Mint and how coins are made, at least how coins are made in the late 1800s or the 19th century. I really enjoyed learning about this. I hope you did as well. I'm real excited to see the very first coin press and that they still have it here. I'm bummed that they didn't actually have it operational at this time, but maybe I can come back someday and check that out for all of you and maybe get a coin out of here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel to keep up on all my adventures, both history and geology. I really enjoy having you all along with me. Thank you again, take care, see you on the next adventure.